Good evening and welcome to the, the final part of uh, this evening's uh, event. Um, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce Katarzyna Perlak, uh, who's a London-based uh, Polish mixed media artist uh, whose work incorporates photography, video, text and spatial practice. Her work considers how historical moments are archived, particularly in relation to women, migrants and queer histories. Her 2017 artwork, Vulnerable, uh, is a recording of 30-second uh, exchanges between the artist and participants who advise her how to pronounce the word vulnerable uh, properly. Uh, as the artist explains, the work reflects upon the relationship between language, power structures, social mobility, and vulnerability. Um, so Katarzyna will start by uh, showing her film, uh, and then we'll talk about it uh, afterwards. Uh, and after that, we will have uh, time for questions and discussion. So without further ado, uh, I hand over to Katarzyna. Świeciła beniaga święce i nigdy by nie zgasła, żebym była uciekała i była bym uciekła, ale wpadła na potrzeby.
Thank you for coming, watching the movie. Um, I would like to take the opportunity to give you some more of a context of the production of the film and the, the research that, that I have taken. Um, let me play it here. Oh yeah, the light. I forgot about the light. Let me see in the dark. Uh, from the beginning. And here. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to talk a bit about the, the film and then also I'm going to briefly introduce you to a few other works that I have made more in relation to my experience of living in UK uh, as Eastern European immigrant. Uh, so, in terms of the, the, the film was uh, done in 2016, I finished it in, in October. Uh, it took a whole year of uh, researching the folk song, trying to, to find folk singers that, that wanted to work with this project. And then there was a lot of logistic goings back and forth between Poland and then post-production, translating the song. Here is Justyna in the audience who translates them. Thank you. <laughs> um, so in terms of, uh, first I would like to speak a bit more about the research and uh, kind of theoretical and political context of this work. Um, I, I was looking at uh, one of the philosophers and think thinkers I was looking at was uh, Foucault and uh, specifically I was interested in archaeology of knowledge and how he was uh, analyzing not specific facts and things that happen in the history, but more the power structures, how they influence the formation of the history, and more what are the conditions of certain things to exist in the history and be celebrated, and some of the things being forgotten or invisible. So I, I, I focus more uh, on artistic methodologies that could make, as he called, subjugated knowledges, which could be women, migrant, or queer histories, uh, visible. Um, the idea of so it was the the idea of the project was that I wanted to reclaim those queer love histories that were not preserved in in the folk history. And I, and I mean, many people perhaps wouldn't even came out in this context at the time. But there's a lot of love songs in, a, in a folk history, but most of them are uh, straight heteronormative songs. So I, I researched songs. I haven't found those that, that carried those histories. So the idea was that I wanted to adjust the songs that were already there. And in Polish you have um, everything it's feminine or masculine as a gender. So the first song, um, I just changed uh, a guy for a, for a woman, which is not quite accessible in the English translation because you don't have this, this distinct, uh, distinction. But that was, that was the first song. Uh, and that's part of the difficulties was already there. Like when I was uh, researching for the project, I contacted one folk song researcher who've made a radio show about censored folk songs. So I was quite excited when I saw this, that it's a perfect opportunity to talk about those histories. And um, I had a, arranged a Skype conversation with her, and at the time she asked me, just before we were supposed to talk, she asked me, how do you come up with this idea that those folk songs exist? So I told her, well, no, I, I researched, but I haven't found them, so therefore I wanted to adjust those that are, are already there. 
and then she didn't want to speak to me anymore. <laughs> I, so that our conversation finished. <laughs> but I guess like that was part of my nervousness about the project because I know that some of the people uh, they are they think that it's like profane almost that you change the history, something that is already there, but okay, I am changing the history, but the thing is that the people, because of the oppression that was there, they never had their voice, so I don't think it's such a crime. But the, the singers, they were also quite nervous about this, that's why they were wearing the balaclava and they didn't want to uh, have their names there, because they work as a professional folk, folk singers, and some of them, they, they said that they are worried that they won't get a job after. I mean, they, they were all, uh, straight, that it wasn't even like about them coming out, but just being involved with the project that changes the history, and also there is the the queer aspect to it as well. Um, so, so especially the first group was quite quite nervous about that, and even one of the singers she asked me to pixelate her face if I wanted to show the film in, in Poland. I mean, this still hasn't happened, but when I tell them, well, because the film got into a few festivals and it's been shown in quite a few places in Western Europe, so they were like, oh great, but they were at the same time quite nervous about uh, the film coming to Poland. Uh, so that, that was the, the first, uh, that was the experience with the first group of singers. Uh, coming back to the political context of the project, I was um, interested in how reclaiming the archives and reclaiming those history, it's, it's, it, it doesn't quite finish there, but it's a tool to kind of rewrite the future and creating it's, it's used as an activism tool to bring a conversation and possibly influence lives of uh, queer people in Poland in the present and in the future uh, and in Eastern Europe. Um, so that was one of the elements. And I've been looking at how, especially now where there is a lot of rise of uh, right, nation, right wing nationalistic ideologies across Europe. Historical heritage is used by these um, ideologies as a, as a backup to, to show. Like even in Poland there was uh, recently this new thing announced by the Arts Council that if you make historical work as patriotic you get extra points on your application. I don't think I would get this point. It's, because it's, a, it's a particular version of the history that you have to, it's like a propaganda in a way. And the history, it's, it is always written in a certain way and it's not just to preserve something but it's to promote certain version which in this case it's a heteronormative uh, white uh, folk tradition in Poland. So I was trying to challenge this and show that people, some people are not included in that history and they can also write their own history if they are not already there. So that was a, an important element in that research. Also in Poland, I mean I can specifically talk about Poland but I think it's across uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, queerness is often perceived as something that doesn't belong to the history or uh, Eastern European identity but it is something that came from Western Europe. So there is this action of trying to say no, it, it is not true, it was always there and it, it is not just after the communists finished that we started having uh, queer people in Poland. And also it was quite important to bring to a conversation uh, queer relationships in rural context because it is very often that queerness is discussed in an urban a context only and I mean this also makes sense because a lot of people to escape uh, discrimination and violence by the increased visibility they move to a bigger cities or to Western Europe as well where you can escape certain uh, problematics because of your family and what not. Um, what else? Um, so yeah I think that there was 
I mean, I am in a certain position of being here that in a way I was quite nervous approaching people in, in Poland. Um, but I think having a personal connection and knowing the singers, some of them have, have helped me to form the, the relationship and even though there were certain difficulties, it, it, is still, it was still possible, but there was a lot of, of not telling. Like when we borrowed the costumes, we didn't quite say what project we were realizing. When I apply for uh, funding to support the project that was supported by a Polish organization, then I wouldn't use word queer at all because I knew it, that it's not very likely I'm going to get uh, support for the project. Um, another thing, I mean, I wanted to realize this project not just in a Polish context, but across Eastern Europe, and I have approach different folk singers in uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Bulgaria and Romania, but this, this hasn't happened. But even though I tried it to expand, I didn't want it to make it like nationalistic in still like proclaiming this Polish uh, identity only. And I, so the song is done, uh, the first song is in Polish, second song is in Lemkov, which is an ethnic minority between Ukraine and Poland. Uh, which was this place after the Second World War. So the second group of singers, they sing in Lemkov, and the song was realized in one of the houses that the Lemkov community used to live in. And uh, it was the only house that wasn't burned in the village at the time. Also, so this, like, imi this immigrant aspect was also important in the film, in addition to, to the queer one, and it was important to have one of the singer who is black Polish and Asia who is French Algerian, and to show how all this historic mix and the whiteness can be also forced into these uh, histories and traditions and how everything, uh, how these different diasporas, they mixed. Um, so um, yeah, so that was uh, the, the production of the of the work was quite uh, challenging, but I'm still very grateful that uh, all the singers they took part in the project, and I'm also hoping to show it in Poland one day. <laughs> That's why I think the the reason I keep the the title in Polish is that I would like this to be the the, the Polish audience because it's like a part of the art activism in some way. Uh, I would like to show the, the film in Poland. Um, so I think like, that's the, the main thing I wanted to mention. Maybe I can show you some other works. Uh, so we have a time for uh, other discussion as well. Um, let me move. I do this slideshow. Slide <laughs> I went out with the PC computer. Uh, here maybe, yeah. So this is uh, is a rather uh, humorous uh, project, uh, public space intervention. I've made in 2014, uh, which uh, just simply says Eastern European demands no, not benefits. It was <laughs> like a joke, uh, but at the same time, I think that there were like living here 12 years. I've heard all sorts of opinions that everyone does. And uh, I just took this reindeer with the silly flag to uh, Westminster uh, and stayed there. I was asked <laughs> to leave. Uh, that's how uh, controversial the project was. So that was rather a uh, humorous uh, approach on the Eastern European, on comments on Eastern European immigration. Actually, when I was going on a tube, there were some uh, some, some people on the train, they were speaking how Eastern European, they both take job and benefits, so there was a resonance on the way too. So I was moved from Westminster to Trafalgar Square, then the, the guys, they came after me to move again. It was rather funny, but at the same time, the work became about public space and what can you do around the Westminster era, like not even bringing the, the reindeer. 
like that was quite difficult. Um, another thing that I've done, it was I had this uh, daily, man, daily mail stand and I just made this fake uh, newspaper front that I placed. Uh, so I used this image that there was some graffiti in England that said fuck of Polish scum. So I just made this this fake stand and uh, I put it out of the uh, off license in Poplar where I live uh, just uh, the day before the, the general election. Um, and then because I, I kept it and then another sign as well to kind of have a conversation about different migrant stories, although those not representing my own. Um, and yeah, that was just there before the, the election day and then I kept it and then I put it out again just before the Brexit vote with additional things saying vote remain and then I had a, and then it was there and then when, when the, the results came I really didn't want to go and collect it. I felt quite disheartened and when I came the guys from the off license, like Turkish Polish off license, they were like, it's finished. I'm like, I know, <laughs> and then someone took the paper out of it, but that was like a little intervention. Um, and then I've made this work, uh, and that was after the Brexit, before the Trump, uh, called <laughs> Titan Fraud and Butterflies, when I just made this work that I made a cake. And it was like, I'm quite interested in, um, in hope and in how one deals with the situation of crisis. So I've made this cake that said uh, everything will be fine and then it was placed on this plinth that wasn't quite straight so it could collapse in any time. And people could come and have wishes and just blow the candles. And then on the other side of the room there was a sign that says fuck it. Um, <laughs> that kind of scrolls around the LED. Yeah, I guess we can have different responses to how do we deal with the situations of crisis. And here I wanted to bring actually a quote of Judith Halberstam from the book The Queer Art of Failure, uh, who said, we are all used to have to having our dreams crush, our hopes smashed, our illusions shattered, but what comes after hope? What is the alternative, in other words, to cynical resignation on one hand and naive optimism on the other? So that was something I was, I'm, I'm still looking into uh, hope and how do we deal with situations of crisis. And this is something I've been exploring in my previous work. Uh, this one doesn't come up. Um, I can show you that was, uh, I've made an installation called Your Dearest Wish. And I've made it in, uh, in 2014 in uh, collaboration with Project O, uh, Jamila Johansson, John and uh, Alexandrina Hemsley, uh, with Aduka King, uh, Romain Edwaru, Agnieszka Szczotka, uh, and my mom and another girl from Italy. So it was done between England, Italy and Poland. And there were different actions that people uh, performed. Uh, Aduke was opening and eating fortune cookies. Jamila and Alexandrina was copying video from a Spike Lee movie, Do the Right Thing and uh, Find the Power by Public Enemy. So they were uh, copying the video clip and then there's Agnieszka try to hold her breath under the water. Romain performs very slow dance on a gentrification site in North Greenwich. And my mom is telling me in the future while the girl in Italy is trying to climb a rope with the British flag behind her. So I'm just going to show you this. <laughs>
And there is a ride by Sierra song as well, I forgot. <laughs> Najbliższa przyszłość jakieś do nas i korzyści materialne. So, so the last work uh, I wanted to mention uh, is the, the recent one which I'm showing now on my uh, degree show at uh, Slate. I'm just finishing my MA. Uh, it's a vulnerable. Um, the work uh, it was it was influenced. It was just done. Uh, it was done after after Brexit and in response to a uh, hate crime uh, killing of Arkadiusz Juzwik shortly after the Brexit vote in Hadlow. So I was interested how um, how the accent can and the language can uh, influence the social mobility and attract the violence. That is to say, in, in, in Eastern European context, the, the language, if, if you have an Eastern European accent, makes you vulnerable, yet Eastern European migrants, most of them, they benefit or they have a different relation to the immigration because of the white privilege they also experience. Yet uh, I was interested in um, how the accent and this, this it's not only for the migrant story, but also for the class differences. And in England specifically, you have a lot of different accents, and this can influence how you are perceived and your social mobility. So I've, uh, I think I asked here yeah, like 142 people to tell me how to say vulnerable. I started off with uh, native English speakers, but then I was asking um, everyone. And I went also to uh, recently to Harlow, where Arkadiusz was killed, and was asking people to tell me vulnerable, uh, how to say vulnerable there. Uh, so I just wanted to play you a fragment, the, the beginning of the, of the recording, which includes the, the Harlow uh, recording. Vulnerable. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
If you want to hear more, uh, there, it's, it's going to be included in the in the show. Um, so yeah, I think uh, it's already done tonight, so I should stop uh, so we can have a conversation. Okay. Can you just uh, mention that your show, the final show, starts at Slate? On Wednesday. Is, uh, you know, you just enter the school site from the main, uh, main door of UC UCL and it's open. From, from no, from Wednesday uh, evening uh, up to 18th. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Great. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So. Question now.